Welcome back. We're going to start to get into the good stuff now. We're going to learn a little bit more program control. Almost every programming language has something called conditional statements. And so this is a little example to show you how you can get your program to decide whether or not to run a block of code. Easier just to see the pre-entered program here. You'll see here our example. User enters a grade. And then I have something here called if. This is a condition. If. You put a parenthesis okay, around your condition, and basically you have to make a statement that will evaluate to true or false. Okay, It's called a Boolean condition. And when you do this, you basically use these little math symbols, probably you remember from grade 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the less than. So if the grade variable is currently less than 50, if that is true, it will run whatever block of code you put between the curly braces. And so I only have one line here, system out fail. Okay, when we give us a go. Now obviously if they enter a grade like 100, 100 is not less than 50, this block of code will not run, and the cursor will basically just jump from here, and it just continues on down here. This block of code is ignored. So it's a pretty simple idea. You'll see here I have lucky number, user enters a number. This is the test for equals when you're dealing with numbers. It's not one equal sign, it's two equal signs. Okay, why is it two? For now, it just is. Okay, two equal signs to test for equality with numbers. Very common beginner mistake is they forget that and they do something like that. What that does is that actually sets the variable num equal to a value of seven. That's not what we want to do, right? We're trying to test for equality here. So two equal signs, lucky. But look at this, else. What this is, is something you can tag on to any if statement. Whenever you do an if statement, you could say, well, if the statement's true, run this block of code. Else, run this block of code. So if you can imagine here, if the user types seven in, it's going to run the block of code, lucky. And then the cursor is going to jump down here. It doesn't even look at that else statement. But if the user types in something like 99, if the number equals 99, or sorry, if the number is 7, no, it's not. So it jumps down here and says, else, otherwise, do this code. So what you get here is if it doesn't do this code, it's going to do the else statement for sure. So one of these is going to take place. So you don't always have to use an else, but it's an option there, right? So if it's uh, I got to go left or I got to go right, one of them is going to happen. The if and the else is perfect. You'll see here, I do a little temperature. I'm just using the greater than or equal operator here. Okay, so that's available to you. So 100, 101, 102, anything above, right? 100 and over is going to count, and the water would be steam. Okay, that's H2O, by the way. And then we have a little password example here to finish this off, just to show you actually a trickier thing you have to do when you're dealing with strings. You actually cannot check the equality of strings with the double equal sign. It actually doesn't do what you think it's going to do. So for now, what you do is you actually have to use this little method here, dot equals. So look at the way this works. The user enters a password. So let's say they do enter the word computer. The password variable is equal to computer. And then I say, hey, if this is true, if password dot equals, and then there's your test. I want to see, does it equal computer? Well, this is actually going to send back basically yes or no, true or false, depending on what the user entered. If it's true, that password equals computer, then it's going to print out, you can enter. If it's not true, it's going to do the else statement. And it's going to print out, you shall not pass. That's my Gandalf voice there. Does that make any sense to you guys? Anyways, that's your standard string comparison. Now let's say you wanted to check if the password wasn't true. You can actually just go not equals. That's the way you check for not equals 
or I know it's a little confusing with the not there, or you could say, is it false? So if password equals computer is false, then this should change to you shall not pass. Otherwise, it must have been computer. And you can say, you can pass. So you can look at that one for a minute in case that one confuse you a bit. But that's the if and the else. Scrolling up a little bit here. These are the operators you have for beginners. You have check for equality between numbers. This means not equal. So, you know, I could say if the number's not equal to 7, print lucky. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. You have greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, and less than or equal to when you're doing your checks. Um, I think I'll mention one other quick thing here a lot of students try to do. Some students try to do this. They try to do a double check in one line. And you'll see right away the compiler doesn't like this one. But this makes sense to you because it looks right. Hey, is the grade bigger than 0 and less than 50? You can't do this. Okay, This is coming up in another video. How do you do like a double condition? Well, just got to be patient for that one. Okay, if this made sense to you, that's good. There's probably a couple little practice ones to practice. And then we're going to come back. We're going to add more. There's more to our conditions. They can get even better. Thanks for watching. Go have fun with a few practice.